Okay, so for this lecture, I'm going to be talking about projects. So first things first, what is a project in the context of the Unreal Engine? A project is simply the unit that stores all the information for an individual game, meaning each, each game you create will be stored in their own project. For example, if I were developing a first-person shooter game, I might have a project called Shooter Project. If I wanted to work on another game, perhaps a puzzle game, I would create a new project and call it Puzzle Project or something. All you really need to know is that one project equals one game. So if I were working on five different games, I should have five different projects, one for each game. Alright, so if you don't already have it running, go ahead and go to your desktop and double click on the Epic Games Launcher shortcut that you created during installation. From there, click on the yellow launch button on the left side of the screen. This will launch the Unreal Project Browser. The Unreal Project Browser is where you can open your existing projects or create new ones. It's divided into two tabs. The first is simply called Projects, and this tab will be selected by default whenever the Project Browser first opens. This tab is for existing projects. It contains thumbnail images of all existing projects the Project Browser was able to find, which would include any projects within the installation directory and any projects you previously created or opened using this installation of Unreal. To open a project, simply double click on it or select it and then click on the open button in the bottom right corner and it will open the Unreal editor and load that project into it. If you have lots of projects and need some help finding it, you can enter all or part of the name of the project in the search bar at the top and this will narrow down the results based on what you entered. So as I previously mentioned, this tab will only list the projects that the project browser could find. If you were to, for example, download an existing project from the internet onto your desktop, until you open that project, the project browser won't know about it. This is what the Browse button in the bottom right corner is for. In this situation, you would need to click the Browse button and browse to that project file on your desktop and open it from there. Once you open it, however, from then on, the project browser will know about it and it will appear in the list. Okay, so now look in the upper right corner of the project browser and you'll see two buttons, Refresh and Marketplace. The Refresh button is used to refresh the list of project thumbnails. So again, let's say that you download a project from the internet, but instead of saving it to the desktop, you saved it in the installation directory instead. Then, the project browser will be able to find it. However, it won't appear in this list until you click the Refresh button. If you click the Marketplace button, this will simply take you to the Marketplace tabs of the Epic Games Launcher, where you can download existing environments, objects, characters, etc., either for free or for a price. So one last item to cover before we move on to the New Project tab. In the bottom left corner, you'll see a checkbox labeled Always Load Last Project on Startup. So what this will do, if you check this, the next time you hit the Launch button in the Games Launcher, it will skip this project browser altogether and automatically open the last project you worked on. So this is useful if you only plan to be working on one project for several days, weeks, or months at a time. It will allow you to skip this step every time. And if you did want to open a new or different project, you can still do that through the file menu of the Unreal Editor. And if you check this box and later decide you do want the project browser to open on launch, you can change the setting in the Editor Preferences. So that covers the Projects tab. Go ahead and click on the New Project tab now. You'll notice that this tab has two tabs itself, a Blueprint tab and a C++ tab. Don't worry about the C++ tab for now. For now, let's just concentrate on the Blueprint tab. You'll notice there are 12 options to choose from, a blank project and 11 template projects. The templates are all based around common game types. So, for example, if I know I want to create a first-person shooter, I could start with the first-person template, and that will load with several features common to first-person games already hooked up and ready to go. Alternatively, if I wanted to create a racing game, the vehicle template would make a good choice. And as it mentions up here, you can add these features in later if you want. So, you could choose a blank project to start with, and then add in first-person features later within the editor. So beneath the Blueprint tab, you will see three different settings that you are able to configure. And just like the Blueprints, you have the option to change any of these settings later within the editor. First, you can choose the overall class of hardware that you are planning to develop your game for. You can choose between Desktop Console for developing computer and console games, and Mobile Tablet for developing phone and tablet games. 
Next, you have the option of choosing between maximum quality and scalable 3D or 2D. In general, you would pair the desktop console setting with maximum quality and mobile tablet with scalable 3D or 2D, which makes this setting somewhat redundant. However, if you wanted to, for example, create a desktop game that could operate using minimal resources, you could pair the desktop and scalable settings together here. Lastly, you have the option of choosing between with starter content and no starter content. So choosing the blank template will start you off with no code, but if you wanted to start with a truly empty project, you would choose the blank template along with the no starter content setting. However, the with starter content is useful as it will load into your project from the start a lot of basic content you can use to get you going, such as materials, basic shapes, etc. So finally, when you've selected the blueprint you want to use and chosen your settings, you just need to go to the bottom of the window and choose where you want the project to be saved, give it a name, and then click on the Create Project button in the bottom, in the bottom right. This will open the Unreal Editor and load a new project into it based on the settings you chose. Okay, so at this point, let's go ahead and explore some of these built-in template projects that are available for you to use in the Unreal Engine. So under the Blueprint tab, select First Person. For the settings, choose Desktop Console, maximum quality, and then choose no starter content. Now, choose the folder where you want to save this project and give it a name. I'm going to call mine FP Demo, and then click on the Create Project button. So now, you should see the template level in the viewport. And all I want to do for this part of the lecture is give you a chance to play these template projects to let you see what Unreal is capable of right out of the box, and also so you, so you can have a little fun with the engine before we go into full-on education mode. So anytime you want to try out your game in the Unreal Editor, all you need to do is go up to the toolbar here and press the play button, or better yet, use the shortcut Alt-P, and this will load your game right here within the editor. From here, you can control your character by using either the keyboard and mouse or a game controller if you have one connected. Using the keyboard, you'll first need to click the left mouse button to gain mouse control over the viewport, and then you can use the WASD keys for directional movement and the mouse for rotational movement just as you would in almost any first person game. You can also use the spacebar to jump and click the left mouse button to fire your projectile. Using a traditional game controller, you would use the analog sticks to control movement, the right trigger to fire your projectile, and the bottom button of the four buttons on the right to jump. All right, and if you want to go full screen, simply press F11 on the keyboard, just as you would to go full screen in a web browser. So as you play around a bit, you'll notice that there really are a lot of things already hooked up and ready for you to go. You have a character who has movement and other actions mapped to the keyboard and control already. You have an area to move around in with some objects that you can interact with, and when you fire your projectile, there is a firing animation for your character that is triggered by that event. And perhaps most importantly, there are physics already in place. For example, when you jump, you don't just keep going up and up, you go up at first, then slow down, then start coming back down until the ground stops your movement. In other words, this level already has gravity configured, something we often take for granted. Also, when you fire your projectile, it will bounce off walls and interact with the boxes in a realistic way. And if you fire your projectile at the smaller boxes, then fire it at the larger ones, you'll notice the larger boxes with presumably more mass are less affected by the force of the projectile. So you can see, this is a really great starting point for creating a first person shooter game. Okay, so now press F11 to exit full screen, and then press the escape key to stop the simulation. Okay, so that's great if you want to create a first person shooter, but what if you wanted to create, say, a racing game instead? Well in that case, you could select a vehicle template instead. So go ahead and do that now. You don't need to go back to the project browser to do this. Just go up to the menu bar right here in the level editor, select file new project, and then select the vehicle template. Now press Alt-P to load the game, click the left mouse button to gain control over the viewport, and then press F11 to go full screen. 
So on the keyboard, you can use either the WASD or the directional keys to accelerate, brake, decelerate, and steer. You can also press the tab key to toggle between first and third person. On the controller, you can use the left analog stick to steer, the left trigger to brake or decelerate, the right trigger to accelerate, and then what would be either the back or select button, depending on your controller, to toggle first person mode. So again, when you're done, just press F11 and then the escape key. Okay, so at this point, feel free to try out the other templates if you want, and that will conclude the lecture on projects.